this is the therapy that I need. I think that this will be really, really nice for me. <laughs> Today, I just want to get some things off my chest. <laughs> I have some unfinished objects that have been sitting in my stash for a very long time. And I think it's now time for me to face them and decide, am I going to continue to work on them or am I going to cut them out of my life completely? So this is going to be a little bit of a therapy session. This is exactly the type of therapy that I personally need. I need to make a decision on these things because I've told you guys, I'm really trying to cut down on my stash. And one of the things I think that was making me very anxious about my yarn stash is actually the unfinished objects that I've had just sitting for months and months and months. So we're gonna do that today. We're going to have a real look at these projects, give them the love and the attention that they deserve, and you know, be very choosy about what I decide to continue and what I decide to just get rid of. Molly, hi. <sighs> this little girl has some chaotic energy right now. I love you, sweetie. <laughs> now that I've pressed the record button, she just wants to get into everything. Typical cat. Um, I know for some people it is, what is going on with you, lady? She is losing her dang mind. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Bethany from the future. I forgot to announce the winners of the 100K giveaway. That was the whole reason for posting this video. <laughs> of course, to do the UFO thing, but this was also a main part of that. So I, I'm really sorry that I have to insert myself now. While filming this, I was pretty, I'll, it was all over the place with Molly running around and then Arthur ended up waking up. So I completely forgot to bring it up. But here I've got the two winners, uh, the names up on the screen here. Congratulations. If you two could please reply to my pinned comment down below, we will get you those prizes. So thanks guys. And let's get back to what I was talking about. We have gone through some reorganizing in this apartment. Uh, this is a two bedroom apartment. And one of the bedrooms that we had before Arthur was actually an office slash hobby room. Uh, obviously all of my knitting supplies was there. Raz's guitars were in there and our computer office setup was there as well. That has all changed. And now Arthur has his own room and everything has come out here. So as you can imagine, this one living space right here, um, it's the main living space. We just don't have that much room for you know, me to have piles and piles of yarn and unfinished objects. So one of my goals for this year is to really rein in my stash and make sure that everything has kind of a purpose um, or that, you know, I'm not welcoming yarn into my stash that uh, will go unused. So actually I was thinking that the yarn was the problem, but really what was stressing me out the most were these bags of projects that I did not finish or that I was kind of just hiding. I was stuffing it in a bag and forgetting about it. And I had a lot of those, uh, maybe not as much as some, but still enough to kind of make me a little anxious. So what we're going to do today is go through those projects, those UFOs, give them their moment, appreciate them, and finally make a decision. Am I gonna keep them and continue working on them? Or am I gonna cut them out of my life completely? <laughs> Completely. This is the therapy that I need. I think that this will be really, really nice for me <laughs> mentally. And I hope maybe in turn, this video will give you some sort of, um, salt, like we can just commiserate together <laughs> on all of the UFOs that we have in our stash. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. Uh, but first I do wanna talk about what I'm wearing because 
It is a recently finished object, so celebrating that. This is my no frill sweater that I've been chugging away on the past couple of months, and it feels so good to have it freshly off the blocking mat. It's a little damp still, actually, <laughs> but I had to wear it today because it, it was, you know, anyway, to celebrate it. So this is, if you haven't been around, this is the no frill sweater by Petite Knit. This is a project actually that I wanted finished object wise. I wanted that in my wardrobe, but something always stopped me from casting it on. And it was some sort of intimidation, which there's nothing scary about this project, <laughs> nothing at all. It's very, very straightforward and simple. It's just a top down raglan knit. Uh, the only thing that's intimidating would be German short rows, but those are no problem at all. And then maybe the needle size, at least that's what it was for me. I think I had heard too many knitters saying that this is just a not fun process knit to do. And that's what scared me the most. But ironically, I've enjoyed every step of this project. Um, this is something that I wanted to continue to pick up. And that just was crazy to me. So I don't know. I don't think that's really about the project itself. It's more about my uh, mentality with knitting right now. It's more about uh, the process for me now than it was before. I feel like I was very results driven, a results driven knitter before. And now I'm more, let's just enjoy the ride. There's no rush and that's really refreshing. So I would recommend this knit for sure. Uh, this is from, or this is using Knitting for Olive Merino and Mohair together. The colors are different. <laughs> I wish I had the ball, actually I might have. Okay, so this is the Merino. I actually have one left over. This is cream. And then I don't have any more of the Mohair left over. That was really lucky. Uh, this I think that's in putty. The colors are not the same though, because there is kind of like a marling of some, is marling the word that I'm thinking of? There's some difference in the color <laughs> and it's very, very subtle. You have to really know what you're looking for. But I really love this creamy uh, sweater. I'm very happy that I finished it and I'm really happy with the final result. So I think it looks good. I think it's gonna go very nicely. It's gonna be truly a wardrobe staple. So yay, I have that, but enough positivity. <laughs> We're going to go into the skeletons of my yarn stash uh, and look at these unfinished objects. I think I've stalled enough, so let's get into it. I don't really have a rhyme or reason with my order here, but I will go ahead and just start with the project that I've decided that I am definitely going to keep because after finishing this one, I picked it back up again and put it back on the needles. I've had so many thoughts about this yarn, about this sweater, and all of them kind of are negative. <laughs> so if you've been around a while, you might recognize this. This is a sweater that I started in 2021. This was my Christmas Eve cast on in 2021 using really lovely yarn that was gifted to me. And I feel so guilty <laughs> about this in particular because um, yeah, this was gifted yarn and I was not able to fulfill my kind of promise with that gifted yarn. I said that I was going to create a finished object with it and it's obviously not finished and I feel really guilty about that. Anyway, just putting that out there. This was something I originally wanted to do as a pattern for myself and I wanted to do this drop shoulder design with this nice little increase line in the back. It's hard for me to kind of talk about it because my brain is just so, so far removed from this project. It's kind of funny uh, trying to remember bits about this piece and what I did because I completely forgot the needle size, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I was so inspired by two by one ribbing. I wanted to do something with that as like the neckline and the sleeves and the ribbing, the bottom ribbing. So you can see that there's two by one ribbing on this collar. 
And then I continued that here in the body and here in the sleeves. So I started this 2021 Christmas Eve and I was really chugging along on it. And then I got sick. I actually got COVID in the beginning of 2021. And that also was masking my pregnancy symptoms. And then I found out that I was pregnant and I had those symptoms as well. They just continued on throughout the month of January. Sadly, knitting was a huge aversion for me uh, in terms of pregnancy. Like I just could, it made me actually sick to pick up my needles. Maybe it was motion sickness or something like that, but I was couch ridden, bed ridden for the entire month of January in 2022. And then I think mid February, I started getting, um, yeah, my, my mojo back. But I feel like the aversion to knitting really just stuck onto this piece and I didn't wanna pick it up again because there were just so many negative feelings associated with this poor, poor sweater. <laughs> I feel so bad about that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why. First of all, beautiful yarn, feels so great. I really love that. Uh, the Cardiff Cashmere yarn. This was gifted by Cardiff Cashmere. I really love the yarn. It's so soft. It's a dream to work with. Unfortunately, the color just didn't come to me in person as I imagined it was compared to what it was online. So I was a little put off <laughs> to, you know, to say the very least uh, by that. Uh, I did my best to kind of make it how I imagined because I was thinking it was gonna lean more towards knitting for olive dusty artichoke. So I purchased some of that mohair and held those two together. It still didn't really do anything drastic for me. I was really hoping that it would drastically change the color, but it, it really didn't. I'm just now noticing that it kind of matches my pillow right here, <laughs> which I love the color, but just not to wear necessarily. Uh, at least that's how I felt. I can kind of see myself wearing this if I continue, so I will. I picked this back up again sometime last year. I really don't remember, but I was definitely pregnant and I wanted to give this another go. I think it was during the summer. And you can see that because when I was pregnant with my belly bump, my perspective on my waist and how cropped should cropped be was definitely different than it is right now. So this is a super crop sweater. I don't know why <laughs> when I was working on this again, when I decided to finish the body, I was like, yeah, that seems good. I'm one of those people that definitely gets impatient when I'm working on the body. So I'm checking my length every row or so, and then impatiently measuring it. And at some point I was just like, yeah, I think I can uh, start on the ribbing way too soon, way too soon. I tried this on and it's just under my boobs. So <laughs> it definitely needs to be longer. And then when I finished the body last year, I also did a sleeve and I, this was a desperate attempt to finish this. I just knit in the round and did ribbing and cast off. I didn't do any decreases or anything. And I was kind of trying to convince myself that I liked it, but that's when this thing just went into some corner and was put on ice. I didn't want to touch it anymore because it just was not going the way that I wanted it to. Uh, that not to mention the neckline de desperately needs some elastic. So it just doesn't look right to me. And I've decided that I don't love what I did here. So I did a row of pearl bumps in between at, at the middle of the collar so that when I folded it over, it would lay flatter. And I don't like that. I kind of love the puffiness of just a regular folded over ribbed collar. So I'm gonna have to undo that as well. There's just so much potential with this piece that I decided I'm gonna pick it back up again. And I think after being really motivated from finishing this no frill sweater, I decided I'm gonna pick up this sleeve and work it differently and see how that goes and go from there. So this is currently on the needles and I will continue it. Uh, and I will update you guys on this one for sure. Another sweater that was drafted for myself 
do you say self-drafted for designed? I'm designing it for myself. I was designing it for myself. It is a half fisherman's rib cardigan. This cardigan was something that I desperately wanted in my wardrobe. Uh, so I can't believe I didn't finish it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, another project that I guess I just got demotivated with. Um, this was definitely past the I'm sick of knitting pregnancy symptom aversion. But I can't remember exactly when I cast it on. But I was loving working up this texture right here. This was a lot of fun. And I was trying to get kind of creative with the construction too. It's a raglan knit, but I had some ideas here. So this is where I left off. It has a really thick raglan border. And then the increases here looked really good. I was also playing around with what side is the right side. So I was showing you what I was thinking was the wrong side. When I, original, when I originally designed the sweater, I wanted the wrong side of Fisherman's Rib to be the right side. Um, either one works, but yeah, look at that. It's so squishy and beautiful. It's a lot of fun. So this is the front panel right here. And then this was the raglan border going into the sleeves. And on the sleeves, there was even some increases. So this was gonna go all the way down the sleeve to the cuff. And I got as far as the body. I This was another one of those things where how cropped is too cropped. This is definitely too cropped kind of thing. Uh, I started on the ribbing way too soon. I was just tired of working the body and I wanted to get on with the project. And so I worked on the ribbing too soon and I didn't feel like pulling it back because I did Italian bind off on this thing. And holy cow, I hate working with this yarn. Working with this yarn was actually a nightmare. Uh, it's We Are Knitters Ecolana yarn, and it's kind of unspun. There's really no twist to it. And that didn't necessarily bother me when I was working on the body, but then when I was trying to do the ribbing and then eventually the Italian bind off, it kept breaking. And that is enough for me to just not wanna work on this project anymore. That and um, trying it on, <laughs> trying it on, it's definitely not gonna work. <laughs> So you can see that the opening for the neckline is way too big. And then in the back, there's just a lot of extra bulk that is just not very flattering. And all of that in mind, I just, I don't think it's working. Even if I picked up stitches here, I don't think it would be enough to really bring it all together so that it sits the way I'd like it to. So that's a little unfortunate. And then, um, yeah, it's short, it's too cropped for what I'm personally uh, interested in. Yeah, there's just too much fabric here. I need to add a band and it's already overlapping. So my calculations just didn't work out for this one. And that's the problem with also, you know, designing your own sweater, something for yourself, custom, uh, taking your measurements and everything. If it doesn't work out, you have to frog a lot. I find that I frog so much when I'm obviously working on something from scratch. And that's just not how I enjoy the process anymore. That was a huge thing for my creativity when I was at one point in my knitting journey, I was in a phase where everything that I wanted to make was my own. And I really loved that phase that was very creatively um, energizing, very inspiring time. But now I'm inspired a little bit more in things that I know are just gonna work out uh, due to, you know, wrist pain that I used to have, as well as now my limited time. I'm just more interested in casting on pieces that I kind of can already see what the finished object's gonna look like and go from there. Uh, not to say that I'll never make my own pieces again or release patterns or anything like that. It's just not the season of life that I'm in creatively. And I'm very much enjoying working on pieces that are designed by others. So, I'm saying goodbye to this one.
I can't believe it. I'm going to find a pattern that um, best represents what I really wanted with this piece, and I'm going to follow the instructions for that instead. Okay, we have a live studio audience now. Arthur, welcome. Woken up from his nap. We continue. Right, so what was I talking about? This one I'm a little ashamed about. <laughs> this one is the zipper sweater man that was supposed to be a gift from my husband for Christmas. I gave it to him for Christmas. He tried it on. I don't think necessarily there's anything wrong with the sweater per se. Uh, it's definitely not the fit that I imagined. It's definitely not the fabric that I imagined. That's the main thing for me, what I'm really upset about <laughs> with this. And I kind of knew when I was finished with the yoke, I was thinking, I don't know if this is right. There was something in my mind saying, I don't know if this is right, but in true stubborn Aries fashion, I was like, no, it's right. It's gonna be fine. I think it's the yarn. I think it's the yarn. The yarn is just not doing it for me. And it just didn't look right on him. It's not how I imagined it. He thinks it's fine. <laughs> uh, it also doesn't really fit him well. And I think that might be because I didn't pair it with mohair. That is exactly what I'm saying myself in my head. I cannot believe that I did not put mohair with this. Not doing it I thought would suit Roz better, but then it's part of the, the pattern. And I think that also made the gauge a little off in terms of how the fabric is on the body. It looks really great off the body, on the body, different thing. So I haven't even done this bit. I ran out of time before Christmas, which is why I didn't get the interfacing sewn in, but now I just haven't done it because I was so discouraged after he did the try on on Christmas day. It just, it hurt my heart a little bit. Uh, what is to come of this? I think I'll go ahead and sew in the zipper. I think a selfish part of me wanted it to be a surprise. He doesn't even like surprises. So I've decided anything that I make for my husband going forward is not going to be a surprise. He's going to know about it. I'm gonna make sure that he knows. He tries it on. He has a say in what he thinks about the fabric, the yarn, everything. That way, this doesn't happen again. <laughs> I wanna show you guys this right here. This is a quilt. This is not a knitting project. It's a quilt. And this quilt was for you actually. Um, I knew that I wasn't gonna have time to finish this, so I'm not really surprised that this is an unfinished object. I will keep it though. I will keep it, uh, but I'm going to probably pick it up in summertime. So this is the Campfire Glow Quilt, and I really loved the Americana uh, vibe to it, and I thought that these colors were kind of cute. Uh, especially for a little boy. So this was originally Arthur's baby blanket. And yeah, I think for my first quilting job, this is pretty dang good. I'm really happy with how all the squares line up and I'm happy with my color choices. The entire process I think was very enjoyable. Even the sawtooth star, I thought I did a really good job with that. And I love this pop of red right here in between every the blue and greens, the cool tones. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, the only thing that I'm not happy with is my hand quilting. And that definitely stopped me from continuing on with this project. Also, I just felt that I was running out of time and there was some more knitting that I wanted to do. So, and I was so burnt out from sewing cause I had made my maternity wardrobe as well. So I was doing a lot of sewing in the middle of summer. And I wanna do sewing more in the future so this will definitely be a project I pick back up again. Let's let's talk about all of the socks that I have just sitting in random corners of my stash. These two, this is not the first time that I've done this video, this type of video. <laughs> the last time I did a UFO video, these were in it and they are still not done. Haven't even tried to do the heels. I know, it's shameful. I haven't even tried to do the heels and I haven't even tried to knit the other pair. These are the Kind of Magic Socks by Wool and the Gang. 
I love the idea of them. It's a self-striping type yarn, but of course it's like cheetah print or leopard print. They're really cool. <laughs> and I had to pick them up when they were on sale at some point. And I was a huge, huge Wool in the Gang fan uh, when I was reviving my knitting craft. These were my first socks. I'm surprised that I got gauge on them because if you don't get gauge, then they just look a little wild like this one probably. My gauge went off a little bit, um, but even still, it looks really cool. This one is a really good one. I think the leopard print worked out nicely. I don't know. I forget how they're supposed to look, but anyway, it's just been so long. I have the purple ones, so I finished a pair of them. I had, it was a kit that came with three different balls. So three different colorways, this one, this one, and then there were some purple ones and I actually finished those, so that's great. Uh, I just never got around to it. I just can't get myself to get rid of these. What I think I might do is just put heels in each of these and call it a day and wear these as mismatched socks. I mean, I don't care. I usually wear mismatched socks. I also don't really feel like knitting up the socks again because I don't have the instructions. I don't know where they went. I don't know how many like stitches to cast on. Uh, I think the needle size, it kind of just depends on your gauge. So um, I could, use whatever uh, size. I think what I did was 2.5 and that seemed to work okay for me. That's my go-to needle size for socks. But yeah, you can see the the uh, jogs. Isn't that what that's called? Uh, of when I was trying to learn double pointed needles. So you can see where these were on the needle, one needle. And then this is the gap in between and yeah, it's cute. This is really old, like 2018, 2019 project. Uh, crazy. So then another sock that's just all by itself is this beautiful one right here. This is a Summerly design uh, pattern. I will insert the name on the screen because I just cannot remember. It's beautiful. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this was an intro to color work for me, uh, something that I did last year as kind of a, was it last year? Yeah, was that my knitting resolution? Yeah, my knitting resolutions for last year <laughs> were, uh, one of them was to do color work and this was my project of choice. I think it turned out really nice. I think it's really cute. I used some Big Little Yarn Co. Uh, yarn for the color and then some Filcolana oatmeal colored yarn. And I really love the two together. This looks very 70s to me. Uh, if I would do it all over again, while I really love the Big Little Yarn Co. yarn, I just feel like maybe you can't really see the design with it, um, unfortunately. It's just not as high contrast as maybe it should be with some of the variegation in the yarn. Yeah, have something a little bit more high contrast. Really love the color choice though. Um, the color for the contrasting yarn looks really nice. I really love how it fades and changes throughout the foot um, for the foot portion, but just up here for the flowers, I would have loved something a little bit more uh, solid. I don't know if I would knit this again, so will it ever get a pair? I don't know. I think I'm just gonna hold on to this one for fun, <laughs> just as like a memory. Uh, I don't even think that this fits my foot that great just because of the way that I did the color work. It's still something that's pretty new to me, but look at the floats on the inside. I do remember really loving that. And I would love to do some kind of pattern where it's like the wrong side is the right side. I just love the way that that looks. So I'm proud of myself for giving it a try. Uh, I would definitely do it again in the future. I think now that my sock mojo is so much better, I think I could definitely do this again, uh, this pattern. I just would do a different yarn maybe. And finally, <laughs> for the for the socks portion, uh, I have two DRK everyday socks. One is the bear paw sock version. So that's the DK weight version of this sock pattern. And then this one is just the regular DRK everyday socks. I've made a lot of the bear paw socks. Uh, a lot. I've made some for myself, two pairs for myself, and then one pair for my husband. 
and it's just a really fun pattern. This one, I haven't made the second sock yet just because the yarn that I would need is in a hank and I just don't feel like getting my Swift out. So until I do, this is going to be just sitting waiting. And I definitely can see myself working that sock up whenever I'm just in the mood for a sock on my needles, which is a lot more uh, frequently than it ever was before. Same goes for this one. This is my first time using Mondeem sock yarn, and I really love the pink tie-dye effect that this one particularly has. And then I was using some uh, leftover navy yarn that I used in another pair of socks, and I just like it for the contrast toe heel. And then this time I added some little tube sock stripes. I really like it. Uh, I definitely made these more shorty sock as compared to this one. This one is definitely to pattern. This one is more freestyle for myself. Yeah, what do you think? I really love the yarn, loved working with it. I knit this with really tight gauge. <laughs> so tighter than what's actually uh, recommended in the pattern. Uh, so 2.25 millimeter needles. I think that's just what looked best with this yarn. So it's gonna take me a while to want to work on those because I just remember at the end, my hands kind of hurting a little bit. Speaking of hands hurting, I had such an inspiration for this project way back when, last year. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> I mentioned in my home free patterns lineup that I was really into felting last year and I wanted to make a felt bag that was kind of similar to a Pearl Soho free pattern where it's like this, it was a cute knitted bag. And I was thinking to add a little bit more structure to that type of, that style of bag, I would do something that's a little bit more structured, that's felted. Felting would add a lot more structure to a knitted handbag. And that was where the idea for this piece came in. And this was also yarn that I just wanted to get out of stash. It was, um, Drops Andy's yarn uh, that I had originally purchased for one of the seamless mock neck versions that I was going to knit up. I decided to go in with a different color, but I still had this yarn in my stash, couldn't return it. So I was trying to think like, what could I do with a sweater's quantity of yarn that's not a sweater? And so this bag was started and abandoned. <laughs> uh, I put a lot of time into this uh, as you can see, but I just lost steam. And the main reason where, why I just abandoned this was because my hands were hurting so bad. So these, uh, are what size? Eight millimeter US 11 needles. These are my Lika, Lika, mm, copper needles, which I already knew that bigger needles trigger um, a little bit of uh, carpal tunnel for me, this hand. So I've dealt with a lot of wrist pain, especially at the end of 2020, uh, early 2021 as well. That was just something that I had dealt with a lot. Last year it went away, or early 2020, all of 2021, end of 2020, all of 2021. And then 2022, it actually went away after I was kind of forced to stop because of pregnancy. Luckily, uh, this healed, and I think it was also because I was taking vitamins for pregnancy. My wrist pain has essentially just gone away, except for when I was working on this. These are also heavier needles, so the copper needles are definitely much heavier than the wooden needles that I'm normally used to working with, so that just added, I think, to my wrist pain. So I stopped it, I put it down, I decided, hey, I'm not really going to work on this anymore. Well, I mean, I wanted it to be a handbag, but I think what I'm gonna actually do is just cast it off and felt it and see what happens, honestly. Like, I wanna just see this experiment to the end and see what comes of it. I was walking around a home goods store, a local home goods store recently, uh, Dylan Camille, and that store has the cutest stuff and one of the things that they had was a huge wall hanging basket. And yeah, I, I'll insert a picture if I can find it. It was really cool. And I'm thinking I could transform this to that maybe. <laughs> there is one more. 
finished, unfinished object. And this one I'm definitely going to be working on, but I said when I started the project that it was going to be uh, just something that I have. And that is my inclination shawl, which is a tangled mess in this bag. Here's where I'm at. Do you see this? This is a shawl I started before you were here. Well, all of these things I started before you were here. Uh, this is my inclination shawl. It hasn't really gotten very far. It's worked in half fisherman's rib. So I was loving working the texture of half fisherman's rib for that cardigan. I still have it in this project, so I'm not really missing out on anything, which is a relief. I really love the yarn that I'm using. I love the tones with it. It's just not something that I'm super inspired in working with at the moment. Uh, these are very autumnal colors and I'm just more thinking about spring. So I think what's gonna be on my needle soon is just a lot of spring, which I think is why I was motivated to pick this one up again. Um, this one hasn't been languishing very long. It's just, I pick it up every once in a while. Uh, to be honest, the needles that were needed for this project have been in use a lot. So that's why they're not active. It's not active anymore. That's just what happens, I think, when I have a lot of projects that require the same needle. One of them is just gonna have to go in a corner. So yeah, this was chaotic, <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, but I feel better. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I feel a little bit better about where I'm at. I think I basically said I was gonna revisit all of these, so I don't really think it helped me in, in terms of getting the weight off my shoulders or my to-do list, like crossing these off my to-do list. Um, they're still gonna be around. <laughs> but it was nice to go through these and see, you know, what I've done, what I've put off. And it's a little motivating, I think to get started with these again. It's a good palette cleanser. This is a good way to kind of just like start fresh. It's not the new year anymore, but it is a new year. So I'm starting fresh now. I forgive myself for putting these aside. I forgive myself for deciding that some of these are not for me and I'm gonna go forward. I'm going to have no guilt going forward with new projects because I actually have some new projects that I'm excited to share with you guys in the next video. Uh, and those will be taking most of my time. So I really needed this closure. I needed to just let it go. And uh, yeah, thanks for sitting down and listening to me tell you a little bit about these pieces. I would be curious to know, do you also have some unfinished objects? How many? Because I have one, two, three, four, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 unfinished objects, uh, both knitting and sewing, but you know, oh no, 11. Anyway, I have a lot of unfinished objects. I would be curious to know how many you have and will you be revisiting them or are you going to just let them go and have no guilt about it? Definitely let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here, for sitting down and chatting with me. As always, definitely like this video if you liked it and maybe subscribe if you'd love to stick around. I would love to have them here. What do you think? Would you love to have them here too? Yes, Arthur agrees. So we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.